Okay, thank you uh, again, everyone, for being here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Jesse, a support and training specialist here with Blueprint Solutions. Uh, this is the first installment of our uh, webinar series for our 4.5 update, uh, the Clinic Efficiency Webinar. We'll be going over a number of new features in Blueprint. And I will ask uh, that you hold questions until the end. We'll have a brief uh, Q&A section at the end uh, going over these new features. Uh, if you do run into any questions during the presentation, please utilize the chat feature. In the bottom right, you should see a chat uh, button and if you click that that will expand the chat uh, my colleague Jenny is monitoring the chat for questions uh, during the presentation so if you do uh, run into anything feel free to throw those questions in the chat uh, we'll be going over uh, some sections here and we'll have a Q&A section um, for verbal questions after the presentation otherwise um, Please do uh, keep your um, mic on mute for the betterment of everyone uh, in the presentation here. So I will be hopping between a couple uh, different views. I have uh, this blueprint system open here. And we can see here in the top, uh, this is my test system, uh, my name, Jesse. I am logged in with my username. You can always see that in the brackets at the top of Blueprint, uh, the username that you're logged in with. So I have this open, as well as uh, another copy of this system open under the username uh, DiMatteo. So for a couple of, of examples, we'll be uh, jumping back and forth. I will uh, advise when we are doing so. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the scheduling section. A change made to the providers listed at the top of your schedule. On the one day calendar view, we'll see the full names of the providers listed. Now, if we jump to the five day view, notice those names have now been truncated to just show the initials. So for those of you that have many providers on your schedule, previously you might have seen these names overlapping and very hard to read um, for that visual display. Uh, shortened will allow many uh, different providers to be listed here in the initial format. Of course, corresponding with the columns of appointments under the respective uh, provider there. Seven day view, also going to show those initials as well. 31 day view, the names of course will disappear as we're looking at a full month view with the overlap of the previous and following month. So the one day view is the only area where you're going to see the full name of the provider. Again, five day and seven day, now showing those initials. We've changed the wording on events setting for companion present. If I right click one of these events and choose edit details, the uh, edit event details dialog, similar to creating an event where we'll have this option, the checkbox to mark a companion present. Previously, the wording for this said 3P party present or third party. So just to avoid any confusion with any insurers or third parties in your system, the companion present checkbox is used to mark that the patient or the client is bringing someone with them to the appointment, a companion. So just a wording change there. And again, you can see that by right clicking and choosing edit details on an event. 
You'll also see that when you are creating a new appointment. Very similar dialog there. We now have the ability, if you do have automated appointment reminders enabled in your system, you'll be able to see those notifications going out in the event history. Event history can be viewed by right-clicking an event and choosing event history. You'll see the event history listed with the invitation that was sent out and the method, in this case, it was sent out via email so we can see the email address listed. If it was sent via text, you would see SMS with the number it was sent to, as well as uh, any reminders that go out, depending on your settings. So here in the event history, we can see an invitation was sent and a reminder was sent as well for this appointment. Something to keep an eye out for is the failure notification, also visible in the event history. This has showed that the reminder delivery has failed for that email address. This will be uncommon as most reminders will be successful, but it would be prudent to check that event history. Again, right click and event history. You'll be able to see the history of those reminders being sent out and if something was to fail. Next, with uh, our schedule section, we have in-clinic monitoring notifications. And this feature did exist previously. You might be familiar with when a patient is being marked as arrived or ready, the notification gets sent to the provider. Some Adjustable settings for this are going to, going to be found in File, Preferences. And we can see under User Preferences, Patient Arrival Notification setting. Three options for this, Enabled, Disabled, and Smart. Keep in mind, these are user-specific settings. So I'm currently logged in with my username, Jesse. That's who I'm editing the preference for. In the setup menu under users, if these notifications are disabled, it won't make a difference what the user has set in preferences. They'll be disabled. So if you are looking for the notifications, make sure they're enabled for uh, the user in setup. And then the user themselves has the ability to set these in preferences. Disabled will not allow any notification from coming through. Enabled will allow the notification to come through. And that will also display patient information. The name and photo of the patient will show on that notification. We'll look at an example here in a moment. Smart is the setting that we're highlighting here, smart notification will check to see if there is a patient already with an event in progress in your in-clinic monitor. If so, any patient specific information is going to be hidden from the notification that the provider receives. So we'll look at an example. I will jump over to David's user logged into this system. And we have Paul uh, coming in here uh, at 9 a.m. David will, uh, at the reception, will mark the patient as arrived. And on Jesse's system here, we get the notification noting that Paul has arrived for the appointment. We can see the photo, the name, all that information. From this dialogue, uh, of course, we can respond with one of these quick responses. We can type a message or we can simply close out 
the notification. Next, the receptionist marked the appointment as ready. Again, for the provider view, we have the notification popping up with that patient information. I'll respond with on my way this time. The other user receives that message back, can reply if needed. In this case, we'll go ahead and mark the event as in progress. Now we can see on the left-hand side, our in-clinic monitor shows the event in progress there with the provider initials and the patient name. And looking at the schedule, we have Ashley coming in at 10 a.m. For some reason today, Ashley is running much ahead of time. Uh, and David goes ahead and marks the patient as arrived. Jumping back to the provider system, we can now see since Paul is already in an active event, this event is marked in progress and the patient is in the clinic, this notification for Ashley has the details hidden. No name, uh, no photo, just a generic message, your patient has arrived with the time and the type of appointment. Same options to respond to this notification, type a custom message, or simply close out. I will note these buttons at the top of the notification. Um, the I will show the patient's details. So this will show the notes from the event, as well as the name of the patient, and if they did have a photo on file. So you can toggle that if you do need to see that information. But for privacy concerns, that smart setting will hide that information. Uh, this uh, little person icon will open up the patient file if you do need to get additional details. So just a quick way to view that patient information uh, directly from the notification. Again, the setting is located in File Preferences. And that's the smart setting. It will recognize if a patient is in the in progress with their event, and it'll hide any patient personal uh, identifiable information from the notification. Again, the other settings enabled will be just how it worked before, so it won't be monitoring that. Disabled will uh, remove the notifications altogether. Similarly, with notifications, we have notifications that are generated when chat messages arrive. And you'll see this, it's kind of a standard looking um, Windows notification in the corner of your screen. So if we use the chat function, bottom right, We'll choose the user to send the chat to and type a message. Receiving that message will be one of two outcomes. The full message uh, or a preview of the wording displayed rather. So this is the notification that Jesse, the provider is getting. I can see the user that sent me the chat message as well as a preview of the text. In file preferences, we're able to set this to show that notification when the chat is received. Again, we have the setting uh, for smart, enabled and disabled here. Uh, smart will be monitoring if there's an event in progress. If so, any wording will be hidden from the message, uh, from the notification. So if that was the case, if I was in uh, with a patient, I would get a notification if I had smart set. It would just show me the user that sent the chat message. The preview of the content of the message would not be there. Again, the other settings for that, uh, enabling will leave it as it was before, disabling will uh, not allow the notification to show at all.
and that is a user specific setting in your file uh, preferences. So moving along from the scheduling, we have an update to our NOAA settings within Blueprint. You can now maintain NOAA user mappings in the NOAA drop-down menu, NOAA linked users list. This maps Blueprint users to the NOAA user initials that are used to log into your NOAA application. We can see here we have three users that are linked to different initials in NOAA. And this will set the provider on the audiogram that's being exported from NOAA. So for example, if we look at the audiology tab on a patient, the provider set here, this patient has Linda as the provider. If we look at our NOAA linked users list, Linda is logging into NOAA with LB as the initials. If Linda exports an audiogram to Blueprint, it's going to set that provider field as herself. Alternatively, if I log into NOAA with my ABC credentials and export an audiogram, the provider field will be set to me. Double click and we can edit. You can also choose edit details at the bottom to edit those initials if anything changes with your NOAA logins. You can also delete if someone was uh, no longer with the practice and needs to be removed from that list. In the NOAA drop-down menu, in addition to that linked users list, now under NOAA import settings, we can also choose a default provider. So in case there is someone logged into NOAA who's not set, they export an audiogram to Blueprint. The default provider will be listed on the audiogram in Blueprint. Default type and shape, these settings existed previously. Those are also accessible there in the NOAA import settings. So both of those updates coming in the NOAA drop-down menu. Moving to the patient browser and the patient summary. With a simple click on the patient's phone number displayed in the summary, you can initiate a audio call using your preferred soft phone application. So we can see here uh, for Joey, we have this phone number listed. I could click here. This is the snapshot from the patient browser. We could also enter the patient file and from the summary tab, Click that phone number, that 612 number there. Clicking the phone number, as long as you have a soft phone application that supports TEL hyperlinks or TEL hyperlinks, it will automatically initiate the call in your application. For this example, I have the LinPhone software and clicking that phone number on the patient summary initiates the audio call in my soft phone application. Again, that is for any soft phone application that supports TEL or TEL hyperlinks. Another update with patient files, we now have the ability to delete device added aids. So going into a patient file here and navigating to the hearing aids tab, we can see this patient has two devices in the device added status. This status occurs when you use the add aid button at the bottom to add a patient existing aid. So patient comes in for their first appointment, they already have a hearing aid. You just want to have this on file for tracking purposes. The only time really this should be used to put into that device added 
as new aids should go through the order receive deliver process. However, if you have a device added aid, we now have the ability to right click that aid and delete the added item. Previously, we could only deactivate these, which would show them in the show inactive items filter. In this case, we're going to right click, delete added item. You'll receive a prompt warning you that the process is not reversible. You'll need to confirm this to move forward and the device will be permanently deleted from the patient file. We can use the show inactive items filter here again and see that it is completely gone. Another example, we'll right click, delete added item, the prompt, click yes, and the item is completely removed. Moving to our setup menu. As you know, bottom left, wrench icon, expand the setup menu where we have configuration and customization features for your system. You'll find manufacturers listed here. Manufacturers can be edited. We can select a manufacturer and choose edit details at the bottom, or we can right click and choose edit details, or as I like to do, double click the listing and we'll be brought to our edit manufacturer dialog. If we need to update any contact information for a manufacturer that can be done here. We also have the ability to create new manufacturers as needed in the system here at the bottom. We'll see that bluish purple color noting that there is required information. Once required information has been set, we'll return to the gray background. And once the formatting of any field is completed, we'll see uh, that gray return and we can go ahead and create manufacturers. Additionally, in the setup menu, under locations, and whenever you see that magnifying glass on the left, you can simply click that to expand into the subcategories of that section. Under locations, you can now see logos. Previously, you would need to submit a ticket for any adjustments to your logos. Now you can do this directly from your setup menu. Logos can be uploaded here simply by clicking create new choosing a name and clicking here in the upload logo area. Optionally, I can select a location to assign that logo to or select all. In this case, I'll leave those unchecked. I'll click create, we'll be prompted You'll need to log out and log in to see the new logo added. Of course, these logos will populate automatically in a number of different areas on templates and forms in your system. But this feature in setup will give you the ability to add multiple logos, assign them to different locations. So you have location specific logo uh, adjustments that can be made. So just like that, in a couple seconds, now I have my nice black and white uh, logo available for use. Again, we can right click on these to edit details. We can select and choose edit details at the bottom, or we can double click to insert, uh, to go to the edit logo dialog, where again, we can select that locations that the logo is assigned to, change the name, change the file of the logo. Moving down the setup menu now to scheduling. Again, clicking the magnifying glass to expand under scheduling settings. 
we now have the ability to adjust our start and end time that is visible on the schedule. And this is a per location basis. So we can see here my Manchester location I have set from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. My weather field location is set from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Regardless of how many locations in your system, you can choose edit and change those times as needed. How does this look on the schedule? We see weather field going until 7 p.m. So on our scheduling tab with weather field selected, we'll see 8 a.m. all the way up to 7 p.m. is available there on the schedule. If I select the Manchester location, we'll see that that only shows until 6 p.m. Because again, our Manchester hours are set eight to six. Now what happens when I have all selected? We're going to see whatever the earliest and the latest times of any locations here on the schedule. So in this case, we see starting at eight and we go all the way up to seven o'clock as we do have the one location set to 7 p.m. So completely customizable. If you do have multiple locations with different hours, you can now set that directly in setup under scheduling settings. Also under scheduling and setup, online booking. We now have online booking notification email addresses. So whenever a patient books an appointment online, you will receive an instant email notification notifying you of the online booking. Of course, these will show in your scheduling badges here, but now you can get the email notification as well. Multiple addresses can be added here simply by using a comma, space, and type in the email address. And actually the space wouldn't even be required. As long as you separate by comma, you can add as many email addresses as you want here. They'll all receive that same notification of an online booking. And to see what that looks like here, here's an example online booking notification showing you the status with the date, time, and the provider. Now we'll be moving to a couple of changes with uh, 4.5 that are specifically for Canadian clinics. In your setup menu, uh, Canadian users can now add your own hearing aids directly. This is going to be in setup. At the top of the menu, pricing and third-party payer coverage. Note that the wording has changed on this to third-party. Previously, it was insurer coverage. And under the hearing aids section, you can create new at the bottom to enter new hearing aids into the system. Please note that manually added hearing aids will not automatically receive pricing updates from us when we update the master system. So it will be important to regularly review and update the pricing of any manually added hearing aids to maintain accurate information in your system. If you do add a hearing aid manually, when catalog updates are pushed out, if it is uh, new in the update, it would also be added at that time. So keep that in mind if you are adding anything manually. Catalog updates will also add that aid. In your setup button in the menu, you'll now see badges for pending and failed pricing updates. And that will look similar to the other badges that you see in that menu. Uh, red signaling failed pricing updates. 
green, you will only see if you are not opted for automatic pricing updates. Green means that the update is pending. If you do see a red failed update, you should submit a support ticket, which can be done from your help menu, create support ticket, or by sending an email to blueprint uh, support at blueprintsolutions.us. Please let us know if you see any failed updates and we can correct those. Less common, if you happen to not be opted for automatic pricing updates, you may see the green badge. This is showing there are pending pricing updates in your system. And you should remove, uh, review those and apply as needed. Looking at a Canadian system here from our tools menu, pricing update. We also added the status dropdown so you can filter your view of updates from pending, applied, deleted, and failed. We can also view all here to see these pricing updates have been applied. There are some failures showing here. So again, in that case, if you are uh, seeing that, it should be quite uncommon. Uh, please submit a support ticket and we will correct those for you. One last thing to note about that pricing update section, again, tools pricing update. If you are doing manual updates, uh, you can now conveniently apply or delete those updates uh, directly from this menu. You'll see uh, right clicking, you'll have the options to apply or delete any updates that are pending. That concludes the information covered in our first section of our 4.5 webinars. I will note that we have uh, another option to view this webinar on Friday. And we have two additional webinars for additional features in version 4.5 uh, going over our marketing updates, which includes the graphic based email designer for marketing campaigns and a uh, billing uh, webinar as well. So more information to come on those sections and features. So again, thank you everyone for being here today. And I wish you all the best success in providing the best uh, possible care to all of your patients. Feel free to reach out to our support team with any questions via ticket or phone, and we'll be happy to assist. Have a wonderful day.